The same meal wash can have a more sweet and express chocolate flavors. Um, this process is very common with small producers that like water for washing. Some of the coffees that sometimes you buy from these small producers say, oh, you know, this is amazing. This is so good uh, because they have done you know, a semi wash process, which is semi honey process, not wash, which the coffee can be done if done properly, can, it can taste very good. Um, it, can buy, it, can be, it can be also, this semi wash can be dry in patios mechanically or in African beds. Natural coffee. Um, natural coffee, I think one we tried today, number one in my idea was a coffee going natural. Um, coffee is not popped, 90% of the cherry and the mission which is left. You see, this looks like a poop right there. Um, the coffee should be floated. You know, when the cherry comes, we float them. We put them in water and we only put, you know, in the, in the beds the coffee that has weight. The other ones, you know, we throw them away, we sell them to Starbucks. <laughs> Nobody goes to Starbucks. You know. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the flavors are intense. I, know, I, I, I like the word whiny, because my friend here, Tim, always says, I don't like that, that's whiny. You know, whiny is more of a bad one. Fruity, you know. <laughs> funky is the more same saying, I mean, you're a nice looking, but you know, you're funky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funky for the flavor, something which, I don't know, sounds nice, or, you know, millennium. Uh, so natural coffee, good natural coffee smells like prunes and tastes super clean. Yeah. I tell people how to distinguish a natural coffee. A good from a bad natural coffee is that you, when you try it, you don't believe it's a natural. It tastes so good and so clean, and that's a good, a good way to do it. Uh, I love the smell, that's me, smelling it, you know, it smells like prune and fruits. Um, it requires, uh, natural requires constant airflow and movement in order for the coffee not to be, you know, get uh, fungus. Some coffee writers will perform better with this process. Not all, not all coffees will be good as naturals. You know, some of the coffees, like Carrymore's, they, 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 I don't know why, but they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't perform well. Some of this coffee can be sweet, intense, good for espresso, and some top COE winnings are winning with these natural processes. I see some COE competitions um, last year, competition, like the, top, like the top three or top five, were coffee that were natural, so they do very well the way they're natural. Honeys, coffees, I love those. They can be yellow, orange, red, or black. There's a purple one, but that's a top secret that I'm not willing to share with you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but, but there's some other processes there. Uh, I will always experiment it. it coffee is pop natural. Um, and I will go, this is very important because uh, in my, the way that I do them, I leave 100% of the cherry in mucilage. I leave 100% of the mucilage in the cherry is left. Some other books that you read says 50, I read books in Costa Rica say you leave 50% to this one, 50%. I've done all the experiments, I leave 100%. Uh, this can be dry, they can be dry patios mechanically or African beds. Dry time varies according to weather conditions, usually to 10 to 25 days. People ask me, okay, the honey, how long does it take? Depends on the sun. If it is like this, probably um, three months. <laughs> you know, on the wind. And the, and the flavors can be intense and very sweet, you know, because the mucilage is well done. Uh, good honeys have a great sweet smell, flavor, and body. Good honeys are best to dry in African beds with a lot of sun exposure and constant airflow. Uh, some of the honeys can produce notes of side citrus, berries, floral, brown sugar, sugar cane, molasses, and cinnamon flavors. Um, one of the very important things that I want to tell you is that um, um, when I tell you where I build my, 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 my mill, I'm located on the east side of the country. That's the most dry area in the country. It's the driest. To give you an idea, um, and how weather has changed. People that tell me here, uh, Mr. Trump tells me that there's no climate change, <laughs> he's, he's lying to me because I've seen climate change. And uh, I'll give you an example. I have records for almost eight years of the rain that my great grandfather and my father had. This July, which usually rains five, 500 millimeters, I only had 26 this July. So something's going on. Okay, a glacier came on CNN that just collapsed recently. Um, so the, the area where I am is very dry, extremely dry, which is good for me because it, the area where I am, it doesn't rain. So when I'm picking and, and doing my milling, there's no rain for six months. And that's different because when you see all this coffee, all this honey process being done in some other countries, Costa Rica, 
and even in Colombia, they're picking the coffee and it's raining. So they use these canopies and put the coffee inside there. And if you go in there, you have to take an umbrella because what is happening is you're microwaving the coffee. You know, if you, sometimes you go to those trips, try to go inside. The humidity level is crazy. So a good honey being prepared under those conditions, being microwaved, or being placed under a canopy that is overheating in humidity, will not taste as good as a honey that is well processed. And that's probably why I use 100% usage, because all those other countries they use 50% usage, because if they do 100% usage, they probably get moldy. So I have the opportunity to put more sugar into the coffee. That's why those honeys can, can taste better. Plus, there's no rain, plus uh, there's an airflow. El Salvador uh, is one of the best places for making coffee in the world, and I'll tell you why. It's the only country in Central America who doesn't have a coast to the Atlantic Ocean. So, since we don't have a, a coast to the Atlantic, we only have to the Pacific, Nicaragua, Honduras, and, and, and Guatemala, the monsoon rains hits them during the picking season. So there's water, it's raining when they're picking, Honduras has it. In El Salvador, it's completely different. It doesn't rain. In my farm, it rains like hell for six months, and then it's like you know Hawaii. I mean, it's beautiful. It doesn't I mean it's nice. So I can work during that period. I can do all this meaning and all this work. That's one of my advantages that I have. Um, so um, I'll go fast, just explaining everybody a little bit fit to finish what it is for. How am I doing? Yeah. Eleven minutes over. <laughs> no problem, okay, sorry about that. Uh, the, yellow, the yellow honey, <laughs> so you just told me if you want me to say. But the yellow honey is 100%, usually it's left coffee is moving and, and rake as soon as the, the pulp stands to the exposure by, by night. So the, the coffee is thrown in the pulpit and it's moved constantly. Okay, you can see there's a, some there's a yellow. The orange honey is different because we leave the coffee without moving two days. So you start a fermentation process that changes the color. So the first one is one day, the second is two days, okay? The red honey, we leave it for three days. People see and say, this guy is, is local. I mean, he's not moving the coffee, the, the coffee is going to get.